Hi, welcome to the Oliver Federer YouTube channel, and today I'm looking at my 1984 Volkswagen Rabbit, and I am considering my options on how to lift this baby. Already checked the internet, and apparently no one ever lifts these because there's literally no way to do it for sale. But not to worry, it really can't be that hard. So let's jump right into it. First ideas I have. So for starters, my Rabbit is already at its tallest ride height. I currently have a set of Megan Racing coilovers on it, and my plan was originally to buy some kind of different strut combination, but after looking at the options, I don't feel like spending the money. Uh, so really all we need is to have our mounts of the current struts higher. I realize this doesn't increase my suspension travel or anything fancy like that, but it's the cheapest and easiest way to just get way more ground clearance. I sussed out how much we need, slash can really get, uh, and that kind of looks like this. So right now we're at ride height, I'm jacking, and just as this tire starts to leave the ground, right there, that's a two inch lift. That's looking pretty good to me. If that is at full sag and it's this tall, that'll be pretty sweet. So I think I'm gonna start with a two inch. Um, and the other reason this works out well is that what ends up being the tightest constraint of all is the CV axle and the frame on the other side. So your control arm is coming in and your CV axle is kind of coming across it. And if you lift it too high, you're gonna end up hitting the CV axle on your control arm mount. For now, I'm gonna to stick to the two inch, which gets it really close. Uh, and then at full sag, it still might hit, honestly, so this is a bit dicey. But in the front, I'm gonna make these removable adapters, and I'll show you what I'm thinking. Most lift kit that don't alter suspension travel are pretty much spacers, right? So if my strut normally mounts here, then all you gotta do is that. You gotta make the mounts down here and then make this plate mount up here. So all I'm gonna do is cut a few strut mount shaped plates out of this bigger plate and I'm going to offset them by two inches. So I know that's not two inches but to get the idea there'll be a stack plate and your upper plate I'll end up welding bolts to the top plate that come up and bolt to the original strut mounts, and then there'll be through holes in the bottom plate where this strut can come up and mount here. Now, I'd need more metal than this to make the full set, but I can still make one. This is enough metal to make one side, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and make one front strut two inch lift kit adapter and put it in and just see what it looks like. This will also give me a chance to put it in on the passenger side where there's that CV axle potential conflict and let it droop fully and then I'll know exactly what we're looking at. So, I'm gonna do this. And then the rear, it gets a little weirder. Uh, I don't think there's as nice of an impermanent solution available. I'm gonna think about it a little more, it's possible. You can fit a tube in there and bolt the tube to the mount, bolt the shock to that. But I just think it might be too wobbly. So ultimately, I think it might be easiest to just weld a plate to the inside of the fender where I want it lower. So if I'm raising the front by two inches, I'm gonna raise the rear by four inches because it's already at its tallest ride height and it's a little, I would love to compress the coilovers a bit if anything, compress their height adjustment that is. So I'm gonna make the rear four inches tall and for that reason it might be good to make the front three inches tall just so I'm less at the height adjustment extent of my coilover. Anyways, we're still gonna proceed with this idea. Off we go. So for starters, the strut mounting bolts are six inches apart. So this here, or they're a little less than six inches apart. So this is six and a half. So that gives us enough material on either side of the mounting holes to do it safely. And there's about a five inch width to it. And then it's gonna need a bit of a taper. So some sort of something like this. And I'm gonna wait on adding the taper till after I cut it out. And I just measured the strut mounting holes should be five and three quarters inches apart. So if our spacing is five and three quarters inches, then our half spacing should be two and seven eighths inches off of center. So let's check that out. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. To make it fit in the fender well nicely, uh, you know, round would be cool, but that's hard to cut out. 
So here we go, approximate trapezoid, I'm leaving an inch on either end. That'll get us past that bend in the strap mount kind of well there. Then I just need to drill some holes in it. In fact, I might start by drilling holes in it while it's still a bigger plate. And then we'll finish by cutting off the corners and welding it up to be taller. Okay, so you can start to see that I'm going to do essentially this. I'm going to offset these two plates and weld them together. However, we're still missing one element, and that is a hole in the middle of both plates. So that, one, you can mount the strut at all, because the strut obviously comes through the body of your car, so it needs to come through the surface of one of these plates. In theory, your top plate could be solid like this, and I'm toying with leaving it. And in fact, I might just leave it because I really don't adjust my struts that often. But it would be convenient for strut adjustments to, for it to be see-through, so I might actually go ahead and cut this out as well. For the purposes of this test fit, these inner pieces I just cut out also work as my 3 inch starting riser plates. Now I think I should go with probably a full box when I go to complete this, but today I just want to scope out how this is all going to shake out. So for now, I'm going to weld these, these guys onto the base. I think just tack, tack, heavy duty tack everything. And uh, and then we'll get the other side welded on too. And then we can be able to actually install it in the car real quick. Not for a drive or anything, but just to see how everything fits. All right, here we have my very first rabbit lift kit prototype piece. I was thinking fully boxed eventually would be much stronger. In the meantime though, this is enough to put it on the car and test it. Uh, it shouldn't actually fit with the CV axle right now. <laughs> because, why? Because I'd have to, I made this three inches assuming I would take a lift, a one inch bite out of my coilover height adjustment to go for a two inch overall adjustment. It wasn't terribly hard to make. The fact that your inside plates double as the beginning of your upper column is very handy. And I feel like it's actually pretty strong, like if you welded this fully, maybe did some little gussets somewhere on the side, like that might be plenty, honestly. So because I know there's going to be a conflict on the other side and I am not going to adjust my coilovers at this very second, uh, I'm going to go ahead and work with this side instead. And it shouldn't be too tough, we just need some clearance, like that, and to take off these two top nuts, and then to put our spacer in. We have the car on jack stands, and this assembly all by itself, it still looks like we're gonna hit the brake line. Yeah, so right there, that's about a three inch lift, that's huge. When you look at how much everything has to flex, I don't even know if the steering is really making it that well. And then you're starting to almost hit this side. So it seems like without like serious front end modification, like a two inch is like your absolute max. And even with the two, like I feel like that side might still come close to hitting. So bear with me.
Okay, with a bit of finagling, we are in. Let me show you what I got going on. So from the top, this is what we got. You can see it's the bracket. And uh, this one came loose already, but I welded some quick bolts through, and that seems to be fine. And from the bottom is what it looks like. Currently on the jack, but up here is that spacer bracket I made. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on its wheels. And I'm probably gonna measure the other side and go ahead and lower the other coil over too, since I've been meaning to drop the front by an inch anyways. All right, here we are. This is only one side, mind you, with a three inch lift bracket minus one inch of coilover height adjustment. So plus two inches from where it was when I started earlier today. And I mean, that's sweet. That's lots of ground clearance. And if you look in the engine bay, it's essentially the top of the strut is about here. Which, I mean, if long term I wanted to lift this, it probably would make sense to just cut this out and weld a new plate in for where it goes. But for now, I think uh, these brackets are kind of the ticket. Let's add light to this subject. And you can see now that we're at ride height, Everything looks pretty chill. When you're at full droop, it's kind of scary looking. Uh, the CV axle's at a gnarly angle. The brake line's at a gnarly angle. But now that we're back down, two inches from ride height, really quite chill, really quite nice. Here's another angle of it to try to show you the height difference. I expect it's actually slightly taller than it looks too, because this is now the highest corner in the car by two inches, which means it's getting more weight for sure. So I need to get some more eighth inch plate and make another one for the other side and see how everything turns out. It does look like we picked up the teensiest bit of positive camber by lifting it that much. Okay, so I mean, I'm pretty stoked on this. I used to think having my car slammed was really cool. And I mean, it, don't get me wrong, aesthetically speaking, it is very cool. But performance speaking, it's total dog shit. When your car is lowered a lot, well, specifically when your Mark I is lowered a lot, your control arms are like going upwards like this. You look like Flappy Bird and you can't corner for shit. Um, so that's why I had mine at this kind of race configuration, partially because Denver roads suck and have potholes everywhere and have weird curves and stuff. And partly because, yeah, you literally do get a better handling car when you have it at a normal ride height as opposed to a slammed ride height. But slammed looks cool, I mean, I remember. So I still gotta make one for the other side and get some more materials and then try to lift the back. Hopefully the other side CV axle isn't a huge problem. If it is, I'm just gonna have to like lower my coilovers a little more, which actually turns out to be super nice. Instead of having to do all my adjustment in my fabrication, I actually am able to like adjust to my fabrication with the coilovers that I already have. So it's super cool. And after I get that squared away, it's time for some new tires. These are really old street tires and they're okay, but I'm thinking some big all terrains. You know, the biggest I can fit, if I have to cut some of the fender out, that's fine. I want this thing to be able to go anywhere in any condition, pretty much, short of needing better traction because it's two wheel drive open differential. But at any rate, I envision a few more sessions. I imagine this is how to lift your rabbit part one. I think there's at least a part two and a part three and maybe more parts. However many sessions it takes me to get the whole thing up off the ground. But this has been super fun and I'm super excited that this like worked in any capacity. So thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you. Have a good day out there.